All right, so I got a GI, a gastrointestinal test done. I took it back in January, I think I sent it in, and I am going to share the results. I'm going to tell you I'm not the expert at this, so let me get a screen share going here. Um, well, I'm going to do one thing first. Something I just learned how to do was share my iPhone screen, which I think is pretty awesome. Um, Cause this will, uh, so basically a uh, Dr. Lucy uh, Bluen from Canada helped me out with this test. So there's my uh, email, I got the test. Uh, I'm gonna stop that share. Sorry, that's just a new trick I learned. I'm really excited. This is on Zoom meetings. All right, I'm now gonna share the actual test results. Um, do try this at home folks, because I think it's pretty awesome. So the company is um, Gen Genova Diagnostics. I had this test kit that they sent and I sent it uh, yeah, January 28th, received January 30th, reported February 20th. So yeah, it was a, um, and here's uh, Lucy Bluen who's helping out with this. It was one of those things that uh, collecting it was less than uh, exciting. I won't lie, I did not enjoy that process, but what, uh, what, what's come out of this is uh, there's a belief, um, the interpretation of the results right here, digestion and absorption. Um, the way this has been interpreted is that my gallbladder is not doing its job uh, processing things. And um, we're going to look into that further and try to find ways to, uh, to correct that, natural ways. And um, Dr. Bloom's gonna work with me to, uh, to, to take care of that. Uh, also, the other thing was, um, well, one of the, the stomach apparently is dry. The mucosa, the mucus in the stomach isn't um, absorbing nutrients properly. And so our, our goal there is to start uh, uh, do things that are going to get that, that, that the mucus uh, lining to start absorbing uh, the, the nutrients and the supplements I'm taking because right now um, that's not happening properly and a lot of the, the nutrition I'm getting is basically not uh, not getting into my system so um, I'm just going to scroll through here and you know a lot of most of the uh, the testing they did, the parasites, there's no parasites, that's good. Um, I'm not going to get into the, into the weeds too far with some of this because, number one, I'm not an expert in it, and I just make a fool of myself if I try to, to talk about it. But those of you that have, um, that have the um, expertise can probably look at this, interpret this uh, in your own way. So... Uh, you know, the bacteria, you know, this is the, the E. coli right here, uh, non-pathogen, non-pathogen for the bifidobacterium, whatever that is. Um, but we're, we're going to try to you know, get rid of whatever is there as well. Um, again, non-pathogen, mycology, fungal stuff, nothing, which is good. I mean, I've been taking fenbendazole. Uh, I've been taking a tincture from, um, you know, black walnut husk, hulls, whatever, um, uh, with, uh, oh my God, um, the, what's, what's the, the Van Gogh on the uh, wormwood and, um, and cloves. So I took that for a month, then bendazole, you know, so it's, it doesn't surprise me that there's no, no parasites detected. I think I've, I've cleansed my body like uh, no human being has in the history of, of humanity uh, with a few different things. So um, all yeast, additional bacteria. So what do we got here? So um, sensitivity, you know, we're talking about, you know, gut biome and stuff. So uh, what, uh, and then different types of antibiotics here, like what, what am I sensitive to? And then what am I resistant to? These are prescriptive agents and the natural agents. Um, so it's interesting to, uh, to look through this stuff. Uh, you know, I do take berberine and oregano and 
here's kind of the, the, the key, the resistant category implies isolate is not inhibited by obtainable, obtainable levels of pharmaceutical agent. Um, you know, read through this at your leisure. You can pause the video and, and take your time reading through it. I'm trying to get through this in the next uh, minute uh, as to not bore anyone. So, uh, you know, the, for some of you, you'll be able to interpret these results and, and it will, uh, it'll be very interesting to you. Um, Suffice to say that you know the big thing that came out is we're going to work on my gallbladder and we're going to work on the uh, the gut biome and the and the, the the mucus lining of the gut. That's where we see uh, real room for improvement. Uh, beyond that, we'll uh, you know we'll pull this out later and I'll talk about it a little bit more. But uh, basically, um, this has given you a you know kind of an idea of what what's going on with me from a, a GI perspective, which. I find it to be pretty fascinating, even though I don't understand what a lot of this stuff means, but it gives, uh, it gives us all something to, uh, to research and, you know, and, and, and think about. And if you guys do want to do your own uh, testing here, you know, by all means, you, you've got a couple of resources now. I'm also going to, um, there's a few other tests. I'm going to do like a, a, a full panel blood workup. If you recall, um, my blood, I did a full panel, like a, a sports type of um, physical back in June of last year. And my PSA, prostate specific antigen was high. And so I went to the, the, um, uh, the specialist after that urology specialist. And they said, well, you know, what can make your PSA high is if you've had, you know, sex, Presumably with another person, I suppose masturbation might count. Uh, but uh, or rode a bike, and I was training for a triathlon uh, before the the first test. Um, you know, now I won't get into my sex life, but the but you know, being on a bicycle seat, they said can can elevate that. And sure enough, I went for the second round of testing. I didn't wasn't riding bikes and uh, was engaging in abstinence. Uh, we won't say whether that was voluntary or not. But uh, the, the test came back under two. So, and there's a, um, there's a book, I don't want to be negative, but uh, it's called The Prostate, The Great Prostate Hoax, written by the gentleman who came up with the test. And I think I have it right here. Uh, I think I did, a, I have done a book review on this. And uh, the, the review on the back cover, The Great Prostate Hoax, boldly exposes the profit politics and fraud behind the PSA screening. And the serious harm done to countless men. This is a must read for every man and the women who care about them. I'm not saying your test is a hoax. I'm saying, you know, be curious, keep searching for answers. You know, children have this amazing ability to ask questions and be curious. And, you know, it's funny. They, they will ask a question and then they always follow it up with why. Why is that true? Why is that true? Why is that true? And, you know, we're not, um, we're not against medical the, the, the medical industry, what we are is uh, we are proponents of asking questions and don't, um, you know, be your, your, your own best and strongest and most passionate health care advocate and never stop asking questions and never stop being curious, never stop doing your own research and, you know, multiple sources. I, I do that all the time. People make suggestions to me and uh, I follow those leads down rabbit holes and I find that many of them end up leading to other questions and answers and common threads that uh, direct me to the truth. So anyway, with that, uh, I have got to go and meet my brother and give him some, uh, some motivation, i.e. a kick in the ass. No, just kidding, Jeremy. Um, but uh, no, we gotta, we're going to have some lunch and talk about uh, real estate, which is my last it's tied for first with my favorite topic. Uh, tumor tails is my favorite topic, but real estate's a very, real estate's right up there. All right, gotta go. Boom! See you out there.